I am now being joined on the program via Zoom by the directors of the documentary, Matt Ogden and Joel Kachi Benson. Many thanks for joining us, gentlemen. There is only one place to start. How did this collaboration happen between both of you and how does co-directing work? I mean, yeah, you go, man, you go. Um, well, when we discovered um, Anthony, we saw the video, our producer, Jamie Patrickoff, sent me the video actually uh, of Anthony dancing in the rain barefoot uh, before it went viral. And I made contact with him and, and started talking to Anthony and met his family and realized there was a really important story to tell that I was drawn to. But equally as a storyteller, authenticity is really important. And though I had never co-directed before, I felt uh organically that was important to collaborate with a nigerian filmmaker um and not just any nigerian filmmaker but someone who would really connect with anthony's story and i saw a beautiful film uh, a virtual reality film that was shot in nigeria called daughters of chabak and discovered that kachi was the filmmaker and i met kachi we zoomed and um I knew right away that he was the right man to collaborate with. And, um, you know, it was important uh, on a lot of levels, but, you know, to have someone that connected with Anthony that that's from Nigeria, that lives in Nigeria, that understands the culture. And then together we have two different skill sets. Some of it overlaps, but some of it is different. And collectively bringing those together, um, would make a better film, a more beautiful film, a more authentic film. Kachi, you will agree with me that Nigeria is the home of dreams. Granted, Anthony is special, but there are a lot of equally special, talented and special kids out there. What about Anthony really convinced you that his story is worth telling? Well, I mean, you know, we, a few factors. Number one, you know, accepted Nigeria is a, is a, is a place of dreams and a lot of talented young people. Um, what stood Anthony out, you know, I guess in the first instance was daring to put himself out there, you know, daring to, you know, do the, what, what, you know, sort of like was the unthinkable or the impossible, right? You know, dancing ballet in itself is hard, dancing ballet in the rain is just like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. But this is like passion, you know, was, was his fuel. And I think that that resonated with the world because the moment he put it out, everyone, black, white, you know, across continents, everyone just fell in love with this kid. Um, so, but that's sort of like, you could say in some way, that's sort of like surface, right? You know, but then we then met him. I met Anthony, I spoke with Anthony, you know, and he told me about his hopes and his dreams. He talked about how he was being bullied and teased, you know, for being, a boy trying to dance ballet in Ajangbadi, you know, and, and all his friends would tease him and, and, you know, say, you know, you're doing something that is meant for girls. And, and, but in spite of that, he just kept going. I remember asking him, so, so why do you keep doing it? And he said, this is, this is, I love this. This is what I want to do. And we know about peer pressure, right? We know how these things can, you know, the bullings and the teasings and the, the, the desire to want to fit in can make you give up on your dreams, right? Just because you want to fit in, just because you want to be among the boys. But this was a kid who at, at such a young age understood what it meant to stick to your dreams, right? And, and that, that I found very, very inspiring. So, so in, you know, I mean, when you tell this kind of stories, you know, this is a character driven story. You have to be inspired first as a storyteller before you try to use the story to inspire others. I think that that's what really connected us to Anthony and Anthony's story. And, and that's why we, we, we chose to, to, to tell this particular story about this particular kid. Awesome. You know, we spoke to him back in 2020 when after his dancing video went viral and he also just, um, we also just listened to him in a video recording we did a few days ago, and I could tell how he has grown in the space of four years. Since you've been recording him since that period, did you get the feeling of how much he has grown? Yeah, I mean, we saw him grow, you know, just over the course of making the film. I mean, of course, at his age, you know, this is a very much a coming of age story about someone that 
is daring to dream, but also looking for acceptance and belonging. And um, as Kachi always says at the beginning, it was this shy kid, very few words. You know, we would interview him. He wasn't used to the camera. It was hard for him to even spring, uh, you know, string two sentences together. And so the interviews were challenging. But as we went along, you know, of course, we saw him grow physically, um, but also just emotionally, just getting more courageous, getting more confident, getting more articulate, able to be vulnerable and articulate his feelings and express himself. Um, we watched that. I mean, you even from the beginning of the film to the end when we were filming it, we felt like there were two different kids. So um, even more so now and, and being exposed to new environment, you know, different diverse people from all around the world um, coming from one community and then going to um, to England at Elmhurst Ballet School um, and learning from from his friends there and his peers and his teachers. Um, you know, he was waxing poetic and being philosophical at the end. And look, I, I think that uh, me and Kachi learned from him as well. I mean, I, you know, just to, just to, to add in here that it was, it was, I think that's the beauty of making this kind of stories, right? Where you sort of like, you you have the privilege really um, to be able to track a character over a period of time and see them evolve and change right before your eyes. And you can, and that translates to the screen as well. Um, it was, it was, I think it was a privilege for us because, you know, just, just seeing that change. And I guess, you know, we were sort of like really embedded in the story. So it didn't, it didn't hit us as much until we sat back and watched the film. When we saw like the first draft, I'm like, wow, okay, this is, this is incredible. Like, you know, um, it was like, how did this happen? When did this happen? But um, but I, I you know, I, that seeing that happen right before your eyes, you know, shows you how authentic and how real this is. This is this is a real person. This is this is the real story of a real person going through changes, emotional, physical, you know, mental, and even skill wise. Catch it back to you. In recent times, we've seen a lot of interest in Nigeria um, entertainment scene from global studio Disney. Last year, it was the animation Muremi. Earlier this year, we had Iwaju. And now this documentary is coming soon. What do you suppose this means for the industry, bearing in mind how it is a product of various individual efforts of independent filmmakers? As a Nigerian filmmaker based in Nigeria and being able to co-direct a film that is backed by a studio like Disney. It's the stuff of dreams, you know, and, and you know what I'm talking about, you know, especially a documentary. You, we don't have a big doc culture in Nige, right? And so being able to sort of like, you know, be able to do this at this scale is, I think is proof that, you know, we are great at what we do. You know, the talent is there and hopefully the world is starting to take notice. And there will be more of this. I hope that my own personal story as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, you know, can inspire a lot of, you know, um, other filmmakers back home that look, man, let's just continue to dare to dream. It's still, it's still like Anthony's story, just dare to dream and dare to do, right? Um, you know, don't, don't sit and say, oh, because, you know, I don't have the funding or I don't have this, or I don't have that, I can't do it. Just do what you can because it's in doing what you can that you will get noticed. If if that 44 second video that, that Anthony did in the rain bare feet wasn't recorded, we wouldn't be making this film. Many thanks again, gentlemen, and we look forward to the Nigerian screening of the documentary at the IREP Film Festival in Lagos later this month.